All right, let's get to the moment you probably have been waiting for where we actually animate an object, which is really cool here. So what I'm going to do is let's just drop a cube in the scene. So let's just click up here at the cube. And let me turn this off for a second so I can take you back for that. And I'm going to click here. And what we have, we have a cube. And what we want to do is we want to animate this. Now, if I leave it in its basic default, the way it is, and we try to animate this as far, let's say we wanted to twist it or bend it, that animation is going to be really, really blocky. And that's because it's not really sliced up into segments. So think of this like a pizza. If I want to think of it that way. If I have a whole pizza and I want to share it with people, but I don't have it sliced, well, it's going to be, people are going to be pulling and pulling, and that pizza is going to be really deformed, and it's not going to be a nice slice of pizza. Well, that's the same way for this cube when we go into animate. So we need to slice this up. Now, right now, we can't see our slices. So what we need to do is turn on our shading. So let's go up to this button. And you should see something that says Grood Shading. That's what we're on now. And Grood is just the basic gray default material. But we want Grood Shading Lines. So let's click that. And you're probably not seeing anything right now. <clears throat> and that's because we don't have segments. And what we want to do is bump this up. So if you're not seeing that, just make sure you have your cube selected. And look what happens when I bump this up. So let's say I bump this up to 25. You see how now, 25, 25, 25. You see how now it's being broken off into pieces? And that is what we want here. So because we're doing that, it's like we're slicing the pizza. We're going to make sure that when we animate, it's going to be actually distributed, uh, distributed. So that's what we want to actually do. So how do we go in and animate? We got it blocked off. We got it cut into nice slices. Well, let's use a deformer to animate. And deformers can be found here. And if I click and hold, let's take a look. And let's just go ahead and grab a twist. And you can see there are plenty of deformers. And we'll end up using some of these as we move forward. But let's just add a twist inside of our scene here. And there we go. Here it is. Now, the thing about the twist is that this has to be the child. It's that big, back to that parent uh, child relationship. All right. So what I like to do is I like to move the cube up to the top. So I'm just taking it and moving it to that arrow is pointed to the left and I let go. So the cube is on top and the twist is on the bottom. So it's the same way we kind of did with the extrude, where now what I want to do is take the twist and I'm going to click and hold and drag this up into my scene. And I'm going to wait until that arrow is pointed down. And once it's pointed down, I'm going to let go. And there it actually is. All right. So what we want to do at this point, you can see that the deformer is not fitting uh, our actual cube. It's a little bit bigger and that can throw off uh, our, um, our animation. So over here, just make sure you have the twist selected. So if I click off, just make sure the twist is selected and then you should see the object settings. You have an option for fit to parent. Click that. And you can see that now it's the same size. And let's take a look at the angle. This is what we're going to end up wanting to animate. So if I click and drag, take a look at this here. We can see that now it is animating a little bit. Now it's going a little wonky right now on my computer. So we'll just keep that on limited. All right. But what we have is we want to actually animate the angle. So let's animate. 
So we have our time indicator here and we can see if I click and drag, we have it here. So what I want to do is make sure your time indicator is at zero. And what I want to do is save my position of where I want this to start. So we'll start it at angle zero. So in order to add a keyframe, we're just going to come over here and click on that circle. And you'll now see that this is red and we have a keyframe selected here. There it is. So the next thing that I want to do is move my time selector on my timeline. Remember the biggest variable in animation is time. So I'll just click and just drag this anywhere. So we'll do that one second. And now we're just going to change the value. So if I click, there it is. And you'll notice that one, this is turned orange, and then two, there's no keyframe. So how do I save that keyframe? Well, in order to do that, you just end up hitting this circle again. And now I have a keyframe saved. So if I go in and I want to add another one, let's take our time indicator, move it, and now change the value again. It's lit up in orange and let's hit that circle. We'll do it one more time, move my time indicator, and then change my value. And let me hit the circle again. And there's another keyframe. And we can do some moving with our keyframes. They're not set in stone, so I can click on my keyframe and sort of drag these if I want. And there we go. So let me hit play. And we have done our first animation. So animation is pretty easy. First, we just need to make sure that we are moving our timeline. Then we go in and save the position and change those values. So it's a basic principle, but we'll end up animating a ton in, in, um, in cinema with cameras, lights, deformers, and anything else that we choose. And just remember that anything that has these dots, there it can be animated. So size, segments, whatever. I can animate anything that I like in Cinema 4D.